Hey, this is Darren from Property Prosperity, and I'm lucky enough to be joined. Um, had Prosper from Online Prosperity join, join in with me to have a bit of a chat about creating wealth through property. So it's been a really awesome opportunity to come along and have a chat to him. So if you're interested in building wealth through property, then come along and check it out. I'm sure you'll definitely get some really good tips and, and hints to you know, try and set yourself up for your retirement and set yourself up for your future and for your kids' future. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got the property developer himself, Darren. Darren, how are you doing, my man? Good, thank you. Thanks for letting me join your show. I'm really excited about it. Fantastic. Now, Darren, like all the other entrepreneurs that we bring to our show, is an ex expert in his field. He's got more than 5,000 hours of study that he has put behind learning how to uh, develop properties, how you can also build properties and how you can sell them and also develop them in and around Australia. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, you might be looking for other instruments that you might be um, you know, utilizing to invest. Some people use brick and mortar, some people invest in stocks, and some are investing in some um, cryptocurrencies. But today we're talking about property and how you can use your hard-earned internet dollars to actually invest in something that is tangible on the ground. Now, Darren, let us know a little bit about what you do and um, you know who you serve within your uh, industry. There, yeah, for sure. I, well, obviously, I actually started as an accountant, and then. Um I decided I just sitting at a desk wasn't really for me. So I wanted to do something that I suppose really, I'm probably just a bit lazy. I wanted to do things that would you know, get the best value or get bang for my buck, I suppose, that could make me the most amount of money with the least amount of effort. And so I looked around at all the options to sort of make some money. And for me, property seemed like a, a pretty secure way of investing and also less risky for me, but also because you're dealing with relatively big numbers, then, you know, obviously you can borrow money. So you can, what's called leveraging. And so basically you can have a small amount of money and borrow money from the bank. And so you know, if the property, you know, you, you buy a $400,000 property, you might only put in 10 or 20% of value of that property. And then it goes up by 10%. You make $40,000 when you've only invested $40,000. So you've you know, essentially doubled your money. So I thought property was a pretty good way of doing it. I tried lots of different things, um, you know, renovating and buying holding and a whole pile of different things. And really for me, it came down to, you know, where I can most, the most amount of money for the least amount of effort is probably what I, I saw was in property development. Because essentially, you're not relying on the market. You're not. You can actually create value from from almost nothing, really. So it really appealed to me. And then I started on this journey of how you know how do I become a property owner? What do I do? All the things I need to think about. And then I just started collecting skills along the way. And unfortunately, or fortunately, with property development, you know, when you build these skills up, you can. It's almost as if you know the more you know, the less riskier it becomes. Unfortunately, when you're starting out, the less you know, the more risky it becomes. So it's one of those things where it's, when you're first starting out, it can be relatively risky in a sense. But then the fortunate thing is then you can leverage off other people's experience. And I, that was one of the things I, I realized fairly, fairly early on is the more I can work in with other people, the less risky it's going to be for me. And, and the less, you know, I can learn through their mistakes rather than learning through my own mistakes. So. Great stuff. That's a, you know, really uh, amazing story, you know, having started off as an accountant. But your appetite for risk, um, you know, is, is a really big one because it says that you started off by purchasing an old house on a big block, which you later developed into eight homes. Can you walk us through how that actually happened? Was that luck or did you actually, um, you know, leverage the knowledge that you had accumulated along the way? It was probably um, naive, <laughs> naivety from my perspective. I thought um, I did all the research. I put a lot of effort into try and research this thing, but in in reality, it was it was you know if I probably should have started more off and tried you know did one you know maybe a little renovation and then bought a one into two subdivision and a one into four and one into six. That's typically where most developers start is from a smaller scale type of thing. Obviously, I just jumped in head first. Fortunately for me, it, would, it ended up quite profitable, and I, you know, um, but I did decide then that I'd, I'd sort of start a bit smaller. And fortunately for me, it was before the um, the global financial crisis, so it was a bit easier to borrow money back then, and so um, it was a lot easier to be able to secure. You know, when you can, the good thing about property development is you're almost creating value from nothing, and so you're not relying on the market. And so if you do all your research and do your investigations into the property and eliminate all the it's, 
surprisingly, it's actually less risky than it is buying a property and waiting for the market to go up because you're actually creating value. And so regardless of what the market does, um, you're still going to make money anyway. And even if the market goes down, you still make money because you've got this, this safety net in there that the actual property is worth a lot more than, than, than what you paid for it because you're creating this extra value. So I really like the appeal of that. I like taking control of your own destiny and the fact that you can actually go out and find a property, find the potential value in the property, you know, do all the research, and then you've almost locked in your profit right from the day you buy the, buy the property. So it's, it's relatively... Um, risk-free assuming you've done all your work up front and then also that's where it comes in and the experience the knowledge you know getting the right people around you to sort of hold your hand through the process to make sure you've you've asked all the right questions uh, to get all the right answers understandable there's quite a lot that is involved in property um especially in the australian front here you know some people purchase property for sort of tax deductible pur purposes and other people, you know, purchase property just for that income that they might be getting. Now you've been guiding people through, um, you know, all these uh, purchases and buying and developing. What sort of um, process do you walk them through? Because all of this is very confusing to somebody yeah, who yeah. doesn't understand, you know. Yeah, what, so what I'm happy to sort of talk you through the process that I go through too, because I'm quite... And obviously, this, I didn't start out like this. Obviously, at the start, I was, you know, it was, you know, I was sort of still trying to feel my way to work out what to what to think about when we're doing a development. But basically, the first thing you need to know is, is what's my property worth right now? See, there's, there's a lot of people that already own a property and they're looking at developing it, and they might have bought it, you know, ten or twenty years ago, and they look at the price they paid for it ten or twenty years ago. So it's not what it was worth ten or twenty years ago. It's what is it worth right now? Because you could, you've got the option, you can just sell your property right now and then realize whatever the property's worth. So that's your starting point. What's it worth right now? And look at your potential to develop the property. It might be a, a subdivision, one into two or one into three, one into four. It might be a, a three bedroom house or a two story house or a single story house or all these different variations. You might look at just keeping the house and renovating it. Or, so you've got to go through all those different scenarios and then you start to flesh out what it might be worth at the end. And uh, so what would be worth at the end is a four bedroom house or a three bedroom house or or um, you know, five bedroom house, whatever. And it's relatively easy to work that out. You get on realestate.com now. Obviously this is a digital show. You're talking about digital marketing and a whole pile of, um, it's, it's a lot easier now to have access to that information. When I first started out, that literally there was, I wouldn't know what things are sold for in the area. I'd have to go and talk to the agents in the area. And I wouldn't be able to get on Google Earth and be able to have a look at the property before I go down and have a look at it. Back in the old days, I had to get in the car and drive down and have a look at it. So it was really time consuming back in the old days. So now you can, now you can get on there and collect all the information. I can go from, you know, I could probably look through a hundred different properties in, you know, half an hour an hour and narrow them all down. And I'll probably narrow it down to, to three or four that were, you know, it's worth looking at even more detail. And then I can narrow that down to one or two within, within an hour or so. So it's actually quite quickly. You can go from ones which are, have a potential for profitability down to, to one or two, which are worth, you know, getting the car going, have a look at. Obviously once then, then once you've sort of identified that it's obviously going to be worth more at the end than it is at the start, then you try to take into account all the issues, you know, are the council going to leave, let you subdivide it? What's it going to cost to build your house? Is there any other things to think about like retaining walls or trees or easements or a whole pile of different things? And so that's the more complex thing to be honest, trying to work out, what some of those issues might be along the way, but fortunately you can work in with other people. You might be your builder or your surveyor or um, your conveyancer or a whole pile of different people that can sort of hold your hand through that process just to make sure that you get all the information up front. And then the great thing about this, you can do all this work before, before you've even bought the property. So you can have a look at it. What's it worth now? What's it going to be worth at the end? What are all the issues in the middle? And then, if you're either hundred percent and you can just go and buy the property, if you're not hundred percent, then you can come and put an offer in the property subject to you clarifying this in more detail. So, um, so it might be subject to me getting council approval or subject to me getting some more detail on, on stormwater or, or, um, sewerage or, you know, electricity, electricity or something. So you can, you can actually put conditions in the contract that eliminate things that you're not sure about, eliminate all that risk there. And so, um, so straight away, you know, you're buying a property and if it doesn't work out for you, you can just pull out of the contract. And so, and you can even have a really long settlement that let's say it takes you six, nine, 12 months to get the approvals. You can make a six, nine, 12 month contract. And so, so then you've got time to get all the approvals. You're not hanging on to the property. The day you settle on the property, you knock it down, subdivide. Um, and the other amazing thing you can do with property as well is you can actually sell the properties the day you bought it. You know, I could organize a situation where I buy a property and I'm not going to settle for another six months, but I can sell them off now. So I can find someone that wants to buy those 
those blocks of land or those houses or whatever, they could buy them straight away from me saying, yes, I want to buy one of those when they come available. And you can sign up a contract. So you can almost, you sign a contract to buy the property and you can sign a contract to sell the property at the same time. And then all we have to do is just sit back and wait for the, for the, for the dilemma to proceed and the settlement to happen. And then it just settles and you collect your money and you move on to the next one. So, so you can see how less risky this would be than buying a property and waiting for the market to go up and waiting to, to, to go down and then just crossing your fingers and hoping it does the right thing. So. Great stuff. There's a lot of house and land packages going on around in Australia. And obviously maybe that's things that you deal with, but uh, from what I'm gathering, you work with helping people, you know, purchase um, a, 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 a less developed area so that they can um, build on their own. So do you help clients then negotiate with builders and ensure that they're actually getting the best quality home at the lowest possible price? Because there's a lot of friction going on um, and back and forth there. And most of your clients might be entrepreneurs that are actually engaged in other businesses. Is that then what you do um, to help your clients or do they have to be 24 seven looking after the builders and seeing if they're doing a good job? Yeah, so definitely. Uh, I suppose for me, I, I feel like in my head, I feel like I'm just a property developer or I do, I'm just developing properties. But in reality, for me to be able to help out other people, um, rightly or wrongly, they have all these licenses and regulations and all you have to have all these qualifications. So it's because I've been doing it so long, I've collected all these extra qualifications along the way. So I've obviously, I used to be an accountant, but then I've got a mortgage broking company as well. So I've got a mortgage broker's license. I've got a real estate company as well. So I've got a real estate license. Um, I help people build houses as well. So I've got a, a builders law and so now after all these years I've sort of I've done hundreds of developments I've been involved in thousands of property transactions and the cool thing about that is every time you do a development you just learn from that and so you just and, and to be honest the, the more mistakes you make the less mistakes you're gonna make in the future and so it's just the thing is I've just made lots and lots of mistakes over my time until so it gets to the point now where I've got so much experience and I've got all these qualifications and all these knowledge as well that I can sort of I can see what's gonna happen before it happens essentially and I know it sounds a bit weird but um, you just sort of start, and I'm sure you're the same with your business. Anyone that's done something for a long time, you start to know where people are going to go wrong. And so now pretty much my job is I just chat to people about property and, it, and I'm not particularly selling anything in particular. I can be at a barbecue or at a pub and say, Hey, what's going on? And there's someone that probably wants to buy a property or wants to sell a property. They've got to probably not sure what to do. You know, so like we've had it for 10 years. Do we renovate it? Do we sell it? Do we subdivide? Do we build two houses or one house or, you know, I'm not, I don't, what do I do with this thing? And the reason that's, concerning for people is they so they know there's this value in the property but they don't want to miss out you know and then likewise they, they also don't want to do something and make the wrong decision and then lose money so there's this fear factor and so what they can end up doing then is just researching and analyzing and looking talking to people and they never end up doing anything and so that's where i come in i just have a chat to people and i look at what their situation is and because i can do everything i don't Unfortunately, sometimes, you know, if you ask a builder whether you should build a house, the answer is going to be yes. And if you ask a real estate agent whether you should sell your house, the answer is going to be yes. Or you talk to a mortgage broker, should I refinance? The answer is yes. And so the cool thing for me is because I'm all of those people, it sort of makes me independent because I don't care what you do because I can help you anyway. But let's just sit down and look at what your situation is. I can get all, get all the pieces of the puzzle and then put them all together so we can look at it as like a big picture and what's going to be the best outcome for you. And sometimes it's not about the money. You know, some people are... You know, it's well, what's going to let you sleep at night really for a lot of people because at the end of the day, it's great. You're going to make all this money, but if you were stressed out of your mind and, and it affects your relationship and you know, it's just not worth it really. And so I suppose my thing is putting all the, pulling the pieces together so you can sort of have map out a plan. What's the best option for me? And I don't make that decision for you. All I do is give you all the information so you can make an informed decision. So, so that's what I do now is just chat to people. So that might be me sourcing a development site for someone, uh, managing a subdivision or building some houses or selling the houses off or or helping them with renovation and the finance or it may just be hey you can't do anything in this property just sell it and then they just sell it and then i help them with the sale process so it's it's quite nice to have people like you holding people's hands because the whole uh property finances um whole industry is a little bit muddled people are confused out there they don't quite know what is actually working for them so if you're watching this show right now whether you're a beginner or you're actually an established um, you know, property portfolio holder, um, the, the guys at Property Prosperity can actually help you tailor a solution to actually meet your specific needs. Now, if somebody would have been watching this show up until now, Darren, and then them, you know, sitting at the edge of their seat, 
trying to figure out how they can get a hold of you. What's the best way that people can actually sit down and have a chat with you so that they can build, develop, and sell their properties with you? Yeah, well, actually, I'm, I'm a big believer in, in your your strategy to, to business is really just to help people. And then that's that's my strategy too, is the more I can help people, the, I don't know, I believe in karma. If I can help people, then I believe it will come back to me at some point in time. So I, I provide a lot of information to people just like you do as well. So um, I've, you can check out my podcast, which is called Property Secrets. I've got, um, my name is Darren Standish, so Facebook Darren Standish on there. I put out posts all the time with YouTube videos. I've got books, I've got guides, I've got heaps of information, just trying to educate through the process. I've um, got a, um, someone's thinking about building. I've got a best-selling um, book on Amazon, um, which is called No Place Like Home, which is like a 30 chapter guide through everything you need to know about building. I've got books on subdividing, books on, on real estate. So you can basically just check out um, Property Prosperity, which is the name of my company. Just Google that in there or check it out on Facebook or just Google my name and you'll see heaps and heaps of videos and basically it'll take you through everything you need to know about buying selling and investing in property and um, yeah if you've got any questions though feel free to shoot me a line on Facebook or any way you try and get hold of me I'm, I'm out of there all over the place just like you are too prosper and uh, yeah happy to help out whoever I can great stuff so obviously you probably have one last bit of advice for somebody who's still sitting on the fence and really trying to consider picking up a property say in the next year what would you tell them um, right about now you know just so that you can um, help them with their decision making process yeah, probably one of the reasons, one of the things I quite often just is asking people is why. Yeah, people come to me and they say, hey, we want you to sell our house. I'm like, why? Why do you want to sell your house? Or they say, I want to do a subdivision. I'm like, why do you want to do a subdivision? Or I want to renovate. Why? Like, what? Like, is, you know, what's your, what's your, where are you going to? What are you trying to achieve out of this thing? Because sometimes people just focus, particularly they get something in their head, I want to subdivide my property, you know, and I sit down and look at it. I'm like, why are you doing it? Like, it's not worth subdividing, but in their head because they've been thinking about it for so long. Is this something that that's, I want to subdivide, you know, and you're not, you should be doing it to, to reach your goals or what you're trying to achieve. So to understand where you're going to and then working out whether whatever it is you happen to be doing is going to get you to there. And if it doesn't, you know, sometimes with particular properties, you know, people say they want to, they want to build a property portfolio and the, the property they've got is going nowhere and they can't develop it. It's in a market market's probably not going to go up at any time. So that probably is actually holding them back from, from, you know, it's not necessarily that it's a bad investment. It's what else could they be doing with that money? So, so yeah, constantly I think people should be asking them why, why are they doing what they're doing? And is that going to get them closer to where their goal is? And if the answer is no, it's not, then maybe they shouldn't be doing that. Maybe should be looking at another route, another strategy to try and get there. Well, thank you so much for that, um, you know, value add that you just gave us today. I mean, obviously, if you're watching this show, you're on your way to growth. As, as you know, we're always talking about how you can have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. Now, when you now start making those profits within your business, you need to be investing them so that you um, create a lot more wealth for yourself and the future generations. Now, as the property market is more stable than any other markets, investing in property actually generates fixed returns for the investor. And if you actually purchase a property in a good location and the property value is, 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 is really good at that time, it will increase in, in, in value and you will be generating profit for yourself. Now, thank you so much, Darren, for your profound um, you know, input to this show today. And um, yeah, hope to be seeing you in the future. Fantastic. Thanks for your time, Prosper. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm with Pro this is Darren from Property Prosperity with Prosper on the Prosper <laughs> online prosperity show. <laughs> it's, this is a first. How many Prospers can you say in one? <laughs>